Hello, and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki, also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner and our two daughters and our five cats. So welcome. Welcome back to returning viewers and welcome to all new viewers. This is primarily a knitting podcast, although I do get into other crafts that I'm delving into at the time, such as cross stitch and crochet. So I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we're still keeping inside, uh, washing our hands, not touching our face, doing all those lovely things. Um, but it sounds like, from what I read yesterday, our province, Ontario, is going to start opening up some, some businesses with large restrictions, I guess, starting on Monday. So that's promising. Hopefully that means that, uh, you know, things will return back to normal sooner than later. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, I think you can tell that I am finally wearing my finished wool and honey sweater. Okay, full disclosure, it has not been washed and blocked, so it's not looking especially at the bottom. It doesn't look perfect yet. Um, it's kind of bowing under, but I think once I wash and block it, it will hang straight and it will look super cute. Um, I will, it's too hard for me to show it on the camera right now. So what I'll do is I'll just pop a picture in. Um, hopefully I can get one taken later in the day and I'll pop it in here and you can see what it looks like. Um, yeah, it's a pretty overcast day today. So I'm sorry if the lighting's not that great. Um, but yeah, so this is my wool and honey and um, it's a pattern by Andrea Mowry, uh, also known as Drea Renee Knits, and I knit mine up in Tennis Fiber Arts uh, Pure Wash Fingering in the colorway Caramel, and um, yeah, I knit the extra large size, and I think I went down a size in the needles. Oh, it's escaping me now. I think I did the a size three and two for the ribbing. Um, but like I said in a previous podcast, I do keep really good Ravelry um, notes. So if you're interested, I will put a link down below to my, my project page and you can check out all the details. Yeah, super happy with it. Love the color. Of course, it's getting a little warm right now, so it's a bit too warm to wear out. But looking forward to wearing it in, in the fall. So yeah, that's my one finished object for today. So I also do have a half finished object. So this is my sieve sock. I finished one. Uh, so this is a pattern by Helen Ollander. And I am using the pattern that was found in issue one of Lane Magazine. You can also purchase the pattern on Ravelry. So it's got this beautiful cabling up the side. Um, the other side is just plain. Um, yeah, so I'm knitting this up out of uh, Malabrigo sock in the colorway Cordovan. Um, I think there's a number associated with it. I think it's 810. Yes. And this is the cake. This is very beautiful. Um, not gonna lie, it's really slow going. So I haven't even cast on the second one yet, but um, this one is finished. And I don't know if you can see, I don't know if I did something wrong or if there's an error in the pattern. Um, Cause when I look at the picture of the sock, the, it looks to me like the cabling is supposed to stop back here. So what happened was I knit the cabling chart for as long as it said to do. And then it says just to knit the toe um, to, I think it's one and a half inches before the end of your foot, like where you would want to start decreasing for the toe. But by the time I was finished the pattern, I was already at the point where I needed to decrease for the toe. So I kind of winged it and I just did, um, I think it just decreased, you know, knit two together, knit two together, knit two together <laughs> over and over and over again until I was down to enough stitches where I could just, uh, I think it was like eight stitches left and then I just pulled my yarn through. So it's, it's not perfect, but you know what? I can live with it. Um, so I'll have to do the same on the next when I cast on. Okay. So that's my, my hoe. 
And sorry, I didn't mention that I'm knitting that uh, my sieve socks up on um, US ones, 2.25 millimeter needles using Magic Loop. My preferred method. Okay, next uh, work in progress is I pulled out my mill suite. I really want to get this done for summer. So this is a pattern by Sandy Rosner. Um, I'm not sure which is the front and which is the back. Um, so yeah, this is the mill suite. You can see the lovely patterning around the, um, the neckline. So pretty. Um, and then there's just these like alternating panels of stock in that with some, I think it's seed stitching in between. It gives it this lovely kind of lines. It's so pretty. Um, and I'm knitting this up in Sweet Georgia yarns. Um, I always get the name wrong, so I'm gonna look it up before I say it. Flaxen Silk Fine. And this is a combination of 65% silk, 35% linen. And it's a fingering weight. And this color, the colorway that I am using is called Summer Skin. It's this beautiful turquoisey blue and oh my goodness, so soft. So one thing I should mention about this pattern if you are going to knit it is, um, and my mom and I, my mom's finished her, so she did knit it as well. But we both have experienced the same issue, even though she knit a smaller version, smaller size. Um, yeah, the armholes are ginormous. You see that? They're big. Like, anyways, essentially what I'm gonna have to do is go back and sew up the sides a bit to lessen the size of the armholes because they're just, they'd be gaping, they'd probably be hanging out. It just, I don't think it would look cute at all. So I just wanted to flag that for you guys if you do decide to knit it. Um, and I don't know, again, if that's a, a, like a problem with all the sizes, but I know I am knitting up the, um, which size am I doing? I think I went with the, the extra large. There wasn't a lot of difference between the large and the extra large, I think. So yeah, um, anyways, all my details are on my project pages. As mentioned, if you're curious, Okay, and the next work in progress is my Felix pullover by Amy Christophers. Christophers, heard it pronounced both ways. Um, so I made a bit of progress on this one. This is the front. Okay, so that's where I was last time. Yeah put a few inches on and I just love this this is the beautiful detailing along the um the raglan sleeves so pretty and um I am knitting this up out of this beautiful baby Surrey roving by Michelle or Mitchell I've shown this a couple of times, but yeah, it's it's so lovely. It's 40% baby Surrey Apaca, 40% uh, Merino, and 20% silk, and it is so soft. And I mentioned my mom brought me this yarn back from Ecuador a few years ago. Um, she was in Ecuador um, this past winter as well, and she managed to snag up some skeins for herself. So she's actually knitting um, a sweater out of the same yarn right now and I can't wait to see it uh, yeah so that's being knit up on oh I can't remember the size size us 8 five millimeter needles um, oh yes yeah, so this yarn is uh, a it's a worsted weight and the pattern calls for Aran weight so it's a little bit smaller so I'm going up a size and hoping and praying it works out because I have not tried it on. Although I think it'll be okay. Um, yeah, so I'm knitting the extra large size. Yeah. Yeah, 
I'm really enjoying it. It's just stockinette now, so it's it's good TV knitting. Seems like I have a lot of stockinette stuff going on now. Um, even the mill suite is pretty straightforward. There's just those small bits of seed stitch, so it's pretty uh, pretty simple knitting. And sorry, I forgot to mention this is housed in my my needle crafts. Um, no. I'm going to look it up because I said it wrong again last time. I was right. My Needle Crafts. She's a, um, a seller on Etsy. She's a Canadian bag maker. And this is her fox bag. And my sieve socks are housed in her bee bag. Drawstring. Okay. So that's all my... Um, my old works in progress and I did cast on something new so as I mentioned in the last podcast I was uh, looking to knit a sweater for my daughter she had requested another so faded um, pine size sweater which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry <laughs> I see you sneaking by <laughs> hi no do you want to introduce yourself? No. <laughs> okay. So this is the so faded pint size. And I'm doing it in um, turquoises and blues. So I finished with the first two colors. It's a little bit stripey here. But you know what? I'm using all leftovers, pretty much all leftovers, with the exception of this color here, which is Fly by Hedgehog Fibers. That was a full skein, but all the rest are leftovers, so can't complain. And uh, my daughter likes it, so. So the colors are, um, so this is a Knit Picks Hawthorne um, in the colorway. Oh my goodness, what color was it? I can't remember. I'll put it in on the screen. Um, this next second color is Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles. Um, in the colorway fly and then the third color on here which really blends into fly but you can see is a little bit lighter more pastel-y that is called it's also by hedgehog fibers that's called down by the river and I don't have a lot of that colorway um, so that stripe might be a little bit smaller I just have <laughs> these little tiny balls I don't know if I mentioned yeah I did that this a lot of this yarn is repurposed from um, my daughter's original so faded pint size. Um, it didn't fit her anymore. I made a size eight and she's now 10 years old and totally outgrew it. Plus she had kind of wrecked some of the, the both sleeves were ripped and stuff. So anyways, I took it apart, repurposed the yarn and I just have these tiny little balls. <laughs> but you know what? It feels good to use up leftovers for sure. And it's turning out cute. So that's the three. So I'm doing a six color fade the three turquoises, then the next color will be this Hedgehog Fibers Heyday. If you can see, there's lots of little speckles in that one. And then, um, oh yeah, and then this one is Glacier, Hedgehog Fibers again. And lastly, Hedgehog Fibers Budgie. And this one has a bit of blue and, or sorry, dark blue and purple and black knit so yeah that'll be the bottom of the sweater and it's knitting up so fast I forgot how much I love to work with not only speckles which are so fun um, just to see the little pops of color show up I love that but also doing a fade um, it's so addicting I just want to keep knitting and knitting and knitting till I get to the next color the next color like it just it goes so fast like I can't believe how much I did on this sweater in really a few days like some good progress anyways so yeah that's my new cast on and I'm knitting it up oh yes I did go down a size in the needles because I know for my daughter's last um last sweater I knitted up on the recommended needle size so these are a size four and I think it called for a size five for the body and I found that the fabric, because I'm, I'm quite a new, 
a, <laughs> I'm quite a loose knitter that I found the fabric was too loose. So I went down a needle size, which shouldn't be a problem because I'm making the size 12 and she's, she is a petite size 10. So we'll have plenty of time to wear it. And I think that's it for works in progress. So now I will move on to stash acquisitions. I have a few. So firstly, I'll show you um, what I wasn't able to show you last time. Um, so I mentioned I got something for my mom for her birthday, which was on April 7th. And um, I didn't want to show it on the podcast because I didn't want to ruin the surprise. Well, I've since done a um, video. We've been doing video knit knit calls I guess every Sunday so I showed her her birthday present so it's not a surprise anymore so I got her she's been designing her own sock patterns and I thought she deserved something nice to show them off on so I got her some stock blockers so these are the owl ones in a size medium which is like a standard ladies foot size um, so these are for her socks for her size and then for a larger men's size I got her these ones box sock blockers Aren't they beautiful and I cannot for the life of me pronounce the name of the shop um, that I got these from it was on Etsy and I will definitely put a link down below as I do with everything else that I mentioned um, to her Etsy shop and I, she is located in Poland um, yeah, so those are the sock blockers I got for my mom. And I also got her these cute little stitch markers. They're little foxes. Which I thought went really nicely. And she doesn't buy these kinds of things for herself. <laughs> she, she, she uses what she has, you know. So I, I just thought she deserved to have something a little bit special. Um, and then I also did go ahead and get, um, another set of sock blockers for myself in a larger size so I could, um, block my partner's socks. And these are the peacock sock blockers. They're beautiful too. And these ones still have the smoky wood smell. I love that. And then the other thing that came in the mail was my package from Polka Dot Creek Yarns. I've never purchased from them before. Uh, she's a hand dyer in Canada, in Al the province of Alberta. And I was really looking for some sock sets. So I was watching Birch and Lily podcast and she kept showing off her beautiful socks that she's been working up through her, um, can't remember the name of the brand now but they were sock sets anyways um and they were like in a Gilmore Girls sock club or something so um I was like you know what I really I really want that easily influenced over here so I went ahead and bought purchased three sock sets um from polka dot polka dot creek so this is their label and this one is called date night so it comes with a hundred gram yeah hundred gram skein of a speckly yarn and then two 20 gram minis that you can use to coordinate to do their like heels toes and cuffs um yeah so that's date night this one is spring showers so fresh and pretty and this is my favorite one and the whole reason I I ordered from them it's called birch isn't it pretty it comes with this dark turquoise and a dark brown chocolatey brown brown and turquoise speckles and yeah I can't wait to knit it up um, just so many things, so many things. It's crazy. I've also placed a few more orders from my first order from We Are Knitters. Have you guys ever ordered from them? Do you have any experience knitting their patterns or with their yarns? Um, I was just seeing these lovely uh, summer tops that were being displayed on Instagram out of their co Pima cotton. 
and I feel like I need more summer tops because I really don't have that many. In fact, I only have the one. Mill Sweet is the only knitting summer top that I have. So I figured, you know what? Maybe I'll go ahead and order a few more. So yeah, I ordered the kit for one of them. So the kits come with the yarn, the pattern. If you're, if it's a crochet kit, it comes with a crochet needle. If it's a kitting kit, knitting kit, it comes with the knitting needles. It also comes with a, a darning needle, so like a sewing needle, um, and a little cute little tag that you can sew into your um, garment that says you made it yourself or something like that. And what's wrong? That's Brownie. He's the baby in the family. He's very whiny baby syndrome <laughs> but anyways yeah so um, I'm curious to see what the kit looks like and and the yarn and um, I'll yeah hopefully it'll arrive by the next podcast and I will definitely show them both off so I got two two tops um, one's a crochet and one's a knitting I am not a crocheter but it said it was for beginners so I'm willing to try my hand at it so I'm looking forward to that and other than that, I think that's it for all of the knitting, crafting content today. Um, oh, I wanted to say thank you very much to all the people who took the time to comment on the last episode, um, giving me your recommendations for knitting podcasts to check out. I discovered um, quite a few good ones, like great ones um, that I wasn't aware of. Some of them smaller, which I think is great. Um, you know, we, a lot of us have heard of the bigger, bigger named podcasts, but it's nice to get recommendations for some of the smaller, uh, lesser known ones. So if you're curious, feel free to go back to episode six and look through the comments. There's a bunch of uh, recommendations there. And um, so thank you very much. And I guess that is it for today. It's a, it's a quick one, 22 minutes. But short and sweet. Anyways, thanks for tuning in and I will talk to you guys in two weeks. Bye.